Thank you, Dirk, for the invitation. So pretty much this uh, talk is uh, conceptually related to last talk by Peter Rost, uh, which means the interplay between communication and computation aspects, even though I will look at the problem from a different perspective. This is a work done within the project uh, Tropic, which is a crazy acronym that has nothing to do with the project goal, but I will explain later on. Okay, so just a quick outline of my talk. I will try to motivate uh, the research uh, done in this uh, project. Then I will illustrate uh, the basic idea. And then I will uh, delve into the main uh, topic, which is essentially computation offloading, and in particular, the joint optimization of radio and computational resources. Then uh, just looking at the, these two uh, different perspectives, the communication side and the computation side. So if we look uh, from the communication uh, point of view, we can see that one of the key driving factors for uh, improving the, the area spectral efficiency, bits per second per hertz per uh, square meter, Clearly, one of these, the, the major factor is the dense deployment of uh, small cell base stations. At the same time, uh, just because uh, there's no free lunch, as you increase the density of these uh, base stations, of course, you have to deal with um, interference, as we well know. And then at the same time, we, clear, we see a clear trend of, towards virtualization. And I guess most of the people here knows much more than me about C-Run, Cloud Run, and so on, so I don't have to go through that. Okay, at the same time, if we look at the problem from the, com from the computation uh, side perspective, we can see that nowadays that we are talking about Internet of Things and so on, so we have uh, a plethora of very different devices with completely different computational capabilities. So from one side, we would like to empower simple devices to be able to run sophisticated applications. And, this, and we can do this through computational offloading. At the same time, even if we take a very smart uh, smartphone, let's say, uh, even these devices, uh, they are very powerful from the computational point of view, but of course they uh, waste a lot of energy very, very quickly. So as a way to prolong the battery lifetime of uh, cellular phones, computational offloading again comes as a, as a possible solution. So, of course, computational offloading is not a, as new, as new, a new problem. Which are the basic limitations of uh, nowadays uh, offloading algorithms? First of all, is latency control. If you access, let's say, a cloud uh, server through your mobile device and you go through a, a wide area network, it's very difficult to control latency over a wide area network. At the same time, if the access point is quite far from the mobile device, you run the risk that you spend most of the energy in transmitting rather than computing on your own device. So a partial solution to this is clear. You should bring the computational resources closer to the end user. And Cloudlet is a, is a possible solution to this. So Cloudlet means that you install a few, let's say, servers like in Wi-Fi, for example, and they should be able to serve these uh, mobile users. But the problem is the availability of these uh, uh, servers. And then uh, you have a double technology system because this is Wi-Fi. So let's suppose you have your mobile phone, you're uh, operating through an NLT system, and then you have to switch to Wi-Fi. There's no quality of service guarantee and so on. In any case, this is not the best solution. So. Let's see what, uh, what is the major, one of the major, I would say, tropic idea. By the way, here I reported the, the meaning of this acronym, tropic. It stands for Distributed Computing, Storage, and Radio Resource Allocation over Cooperative Femtocells. As I said, tropic has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Just a few consonants and vowels uh, here and there. Okay. Now, so the point, the major idea is quite simple. We want to merge into a single, uh, let's say, holistic perspective these two trends, the dense deployment of base stations and computation of loading. So what is the idea? Let's endow small cell base stations with uh, uh, cloud functionalities, meaning the capability to run virtual machines able to serve the users. Okay? 
So this is the, the, the major point here. We want to endow these small cell-based sessions with these uh, functionalities. So this is the way to go towards mobile edge computing. And as you are well aware, much better than me, I guess, about uh, Cloud Run, I think that Cloud Run, in a way, is a system where you put uh, most of the, you, you try to centralize the intelligence. You move intelligence from base stations to the cloud, okay? Here, it's like we are following a, a, a different path because on, uh, we are trying to put the, the intelligence at the edge of the network through these small cell-based stations able to run applications. Of course, they are not as powerful from the computational point of view as the big cloud, but if they are properly federated, put in a cluster, they can reach uh, uh, quite good performance. And indeed, one of the major uh, results is uh, are, are this. One is latency control because, uh, of course, the access is, uh, is a proximity access just because of the uh, small radius of small, cell, uh, small cells. And the other big point is scalability. So essentially, the system looks like this. You may have a, a mobile user which, which wants to run a certain application. Now, this application can either run here locally or it can run th in the closest uh, small cell uh, base station with uh, uh, cloud functionalities, or if this is not enough, these uh, devices can be put in, in, can be networked with other small cell base stations through these uh, small cloud managers. Or, or if this is not enough, uh, the, the application can go into the cloud. So you see, you use resources depending on what you need. And of course, with the, goal, the goals could be minimize energy consumption for a given latency constraint, or for example, minimize latency for a given transmit power, and so on. Okay. So then I will go, now I will go more uh, uh, deeply into the uh, offloading schemes. We can, uh, we can have either data partitioning or task partitioning. And uh, the objectives uh, could be energy minimization under latency constraint or latency minimization. Uh, and we can also have uh, a completely different way to handle mobility. Why? Because typically what we do is that we assign a mobile user to a base station depending on the signal-to-noise ratio that that user has on that base station, irrespective of the computations that need to be performed. But now if you take into account this other aspect, computation, maybe the best uh, base station that can, serve it, that can serve a mobile user is not necessarily the closest one or the one with the highest SNR. It will depend on the computational load and on the data traffic. Okay, so just I will just try to explain a few possible algorithms. So one of them, task partitioning. A computer program can be represented by the so-called call graph. So the call graph is a graph where each uh, uh, node represents a module, a computational module. And then you have edges. Edges means that this module will call this other module here, and so on. Then you see there are uh, labels in each uh, vertex and in each edge. So the, the label in each edge represents the number of bits that you need to exchange to transfer the program execution from one side to the other, from remote to local, vice versa, and so on. And then the numbers within each node represent the energy that you need to spend to run that module in a given place. Okay. So the problem is how to partition the graph so that, for example, you minimize the total energy consumption, okay, depending on channel conditions. There are some examples of this. One of them is Maui, is known in the, in the literature. But Maui is ma mainly concerned only with, the, with partitioning, which means, I repeat, identifying which module should run locally or remotely. Then what we did here is that instead of uh, just doing partitioning, we, we find a solution to a, a, for the joint optimization of radio resources and call graph partitioning. 
Now, you don't have to go into the details of the mathematics. I put the mathematics here only to, for me to, to be clear about the assumptions, objectives, uh, and constraints. So essentially what we want to do here, we want to minimize the overall energy consumption at the mobile side. We have integer variables here. These integer variables will say if a module runs locally or remotely. And then we have a power allocation over this mobile uh, handset. So this is, uh, from the optimization point of view, is quite a, a complicated problem because it's a mixed integer program, non-convex. What we did is that we proved that for any uh, uh, partition of the call graph, the, pro the problem is uh, convex, and then it can be solved quite efficiently. And then we devised a, a, a let me say, a smart way to handle with the integer variables, just relaxing the problem and using a, a successive convex approximation approach, such that we are able to uh, converge to the right solution in very few iterations. This is an example of results where you ha we have the average energy as a function of distance for different MIMO <laughs> configurations. So we can see that uh, using, for example, MIMO 2x2, two two, we can enlarge the area where it is convenient to do computation of loading. Now, just moving to another example, here we want to, again, minimize energy consumption under the constraint that uh, uh, the, the mobile user is served with the um, computational rate sufficient to satisfy the user requests. So, in this case, in the single user case, this problem can be even solved in, in closed form. And the result is that, uh, this is not very surprising, the result says that if the channel is greater than a certain minimum value here, it is uh, uh, advantageous to do offloading. Otherwise, the computation should uh, be performed locally. And the nice thing is that this uh, threshold here depends on many parameters, uh, which, for example, are the power spent for processing in the local device, uh, the, the capacity of the server in terms of computational uh, rate, uh, and and so on. And this is the optimal uh, transmit power. Now, the point is, as we well know, the, the wireless channel, of course, uh, is affected by fading. So here, this formula assumes that the channel is known. Uh, if you know the channel, you measure the channel. If uh, this value is greater than a, th than a threshold, you offload. But if you don't know the channel, what do you do? OK, so the point is that let's assume that instead of knowing the channel, we know only the statistics of the channel. And of course, we know we are able to estimate some parameter of these statistics, like average values and so on. Then what, what you should do is something that I think can be understood. The solution is like this. It's uh, overbooking. What does it mean, overbooking here? It means, uh, it, it means that since I know a priori, I know that sometimes I will try to offload, but I will not be able to, uh, to offload just because the channel will be bad. I take into account the statistics of this channel fading, and then I overbook. I ask for a higher computational rate, uh, and then I see just to be able to, uh, at the end, guarantee the, the rate that I really need to satisfy the, the user uh, requirements. And the result is like this. So we solve this analytically. So what you have here is this is the overbooked rate. Uh, and this, the green light is the, is the real rate that you need uh, as a function of distance. So you, you see what, what happens is that as, as you go farther away from the uh, base station, you need to increase this overbooking a lot if you want to guarantee something. Uh, so here it means that the system is not able to serve that user because the channel is too bad. And of course you, you can, of course you can uh, improve a lot if you change your transceiver. For example, you use uh, MIMO. Uh, transceivers, and um, and at the same time, what you see from here is that overloop, overbooking is not uh, without a price. What you pay is uh, is an additional energy consumption because of this overbooking, which I guess again I think it, it makes sense. Okay, the last example, what we did uh, is energy minimization under a latency constraint, where the latency includes the transmit time and the execution time plus the time through the, through the backhaul, okay? The time to transfer these uh, uh, program execution re uh, requests from the mobile user to the cloud. 
So again, just because latency puts together transmission, computation, and again, transmission through the backhaul, it makes sense that the solution to the problem should be a joint optimization of uh, radio and computational resources. So uh, the formulation is like this. Again, don't, it's not necessary to put attention to the real values, but just it is important here to specify what we want to do. So we want to minimize the energy consumption across the mobile users. And uh, we have constraints uh, on the latency, and the latency includes the transmit time, the computational time, so this should be less than a certain limit, which is the uh, latency. Then again, we have a maximum uh, computational capacity, and then here we have the usual uh, power budget uh, constraint. We are optimizing over the precoding matrices of a MIMO system. This problem is non-convex in general, uh, nevertheless, we managed to convert the problem into a convex problem, at least in the single user case. And actually, the solution in this case can be found in closed form. And for those of you familiar with water filling, the solution is a water filling type. The only interesting point is that the water level, this constant here, now it depends on the computational parameters. And this is a nice coupling between radio and computational resource allocation. Okay, these are just uh, some example, uh, examples of energy minimization under latency constraint. So again, here, this is for a certain uh, MIMO configuration. So as you um, increase the number of uh, transmitter and receive antennas, you can gain uh, a lot in terms of coverage, uh, enabling the uh, execution of a certain application. These are different uh, kinds of uh, applications running on the, on the mobile phone. Okay, now, up to now, I was concerned about the single user case, but this, in a way, is a, is a let's say, relatively easy case, just because there's no interference. So the problem is, what happens if you have uh, multiple users over multiple cells, all of them accessing the same uh, cloud resources? In this case, in general, there is at least intercell interference. So what happens? is that, again, we can formulate the same problem as before, as in the last case. We have, uh, again, we want to minimize energy consumption uh, under a, a user latency constraint. The, the major difference is that now the rate, which will determine the transmit time, now the rate will depend on the precoding matrices of all the users. And this is why, in general, we will have uh, interference, intercell interference. So again, this is totally non-convex problem, and there's no way now to convert the problem into a convex one. At least, we are not able to do it. So what we did is that we solved this problem using what is known as successive convex approximation. So what you do in this case is that, okay, you have a non-convex function which you want uh, to minimize. In each iteration of your algorithm, you approximate your non-convex function with a convex one. You minimize this problem, and then you iterate. Okay? The nice aspect uh, of this uh, algorithm is that, uh, well, first of all, we are able to guarantee the convergence of this uh, iter iterative scheme. And the interesting point is that if you look at the number of iterations necessary to converge, so this is average energy as a function of the iteration index for different uh, latency constraints. What happens is that you can see that in a few iterations, let's say five, six, seven iterations, the method converges. This is totally is uh, orders of magnitude better than, uh, I would say, I don't know, gradient descent. Why? Just because you are really taking into a, um, account, taking advantage of your knowledge of the, program, of the problem structure. You are not just using a general purpose optimization tool, but you are tailoring your uh, successive uh, convex approximation scheme to the, to, the prob to the specific problem that you have. This is the key point. OK, so and, uh, here we have uh, uh, energy consumption as a function of uh, CPU cycles per transmit bit. What do I need? What do I mean here? The point is the, is the following. Of course, there is no single optimal solution for any application. It is clear that there are applications which are more suitable for computational offloading and other applications which are not. 
as you can guess, uh, which are the applications which are more suitable for offloading. The ones that require a high computational load, but at the same time they um, need to transmit only a few bits. If I have to make a simple example, I will say chess game. You know, in chess, every move, if we encode the 64 squares into six bits, it's like I'm transmitting six bits, a few more, but the computational load can be huge. You know, it depends on how good is the program. So this is a, a key example of where computational loading will be useful. So you see here, as a way to characterize different uh, classes of applications, we put here a number which represents the number of CPU cycles that need to be run, uh, normalized to the number of bits that need to be exchanged. So you can see, as this number increases, it means that for a given number of bits that you need to exchange, you have a higher computational load going from left to right. And indeed, in this case, you have a better, uh, you know, uh, energy curve, meaning that the energy consumption decreases. Uh, okay, so up to now I said the single user, then multi-user, single cloud, and then here I am addressing the multiple cloud case serving multiple cells. So at this time we also need to take into account the backhaul among the, the, the clouds. So what happens here, the problem, again, is a generalization of the previous problem, but now there is an extra uh, degree of, of difficulty, which is the, the fact that now we need to associate, we need to assign every mobile user to a base station for the radio access and to a cloud for running the, the application that the user wants to run. So again, this is a, a very complicated problem because uh, it's a mixed, uh, non-linear uh, problem, and we need to find these integer variables here. Uh, for, so for example, a, k, and m means a, k, and m is equal to one if user k will be served by radio uh, access point n, and the application will run on the cloud m. So you see, this is an extra variable with respect to the other ones that we had before. So again, we want to optimize jointly over radio and, and computational resources. Now it looks very messy, so the formulation in principle is, is similar. So we want to minimize energy consumption, maybe weighted uh, some energy. Then we have a latency constraint here, where now we incorporate the backhaul, the latency on the backhaul. And again, we have the usual constraints on power budget and so on. And of course, we have also a computational capacity constraint because the, the, the capacity of every cloud is fixed and they are serving several users. So again, the problem is, uh, is complicated, but nevertheless, also in this case, uh, using the previous approach, so the, convex, the successive convex approximation tool, it looks like uh, the performance can be quite good, and in fact here we are comparing, at least for small numbers of, uh, of base stations, we are comparing the, the um, energy consumption that we have as a solution of our uh, successive convex approximation algorithm with the uh, results achievable with the exhaustive search, uh, which is much more complicated, and apparently they go very, they are very close to each other. So this is very good. Of course, we are not able to go beyond this value for the exhaustive search because the complexity in increases exponentially, of, of course. And um, OK, finally, as, a, as the last point of this presentation, uh, um, what I can uh, describe here is a, is a new, I would say, is a new way to handle mobility. Because as I said before, in case we are able to assign every mobile user to every uh, small cell base station and every cloud, when the, moves, when the user are moving through the network, we can uh, assign users to base stations and to the cloud, depending on the user's request and so on. Of course, now there are completely new problems here. For example, uh, from radio access, it's not a real big problem to switch from a station to the other. I mean, this is well known, okay? But 
as we talk about uh, computation of loading, there is a more difficult problem. Why? Because if you are running a certain, uh, if you are running a virtual machine in a given small cell based station, then when we move, we need to uh, move also the virtual machine if we need to change, you know, to, to switch from one base station to another. Of course, migrating a virtual machine can be a problem. So all these aspects should be uh, taken into account into a, a single perspective. So what we get here is an example of energy consumption as a function of distance. So this is the distance between one base station and another base station. And the mobile user is moving. So he's going from one base station towards the other. This is why the energy consumption increases when and it reaches the maximum when the user is in the middle between the two base stations. Here there are, uh, if I remember well, four uh, users. And there are uh, a certain number of base stations. I don't remember, maybe six. Oh, yeah, it's written here. So this is the, uh, the number of users changing through these curves. And again, we uh, compared the results of our optimization with the exhaustive uh, search. And they, again, are very close. And then for any given scenario, we compare the cases where the back hole is congested or not. So you can see here that you can uh, quantify the energy uh, loss, so the extra energy consumption, when the backhaul link is congested, meaning that you cannot use it as much as you would like to do it, just because of its condition. OK, so essentially, this is, the, this is all about uh, what I wanted to talk. So what I, what I try to emphasize is that as soon as we put the application inside the optimization of the radio resources, we have a, a new set of problems to be solved. And it looks like the, the, the clear solution should go through a joint optimization of radio and computational resources. And um, I think this is all. So I will be happy to take questions from the, from the audience. Thank you very much for this. Please. I have a question. Um, sure. You, you said that when, when you have mobility, yes, uh, that you want to migrate the virtual machine and so on. And you said also this might be some problems because yeah. migration times and so on, you need a lot of uh, the paper uh, right. holding and spare. And so yeah. Um, uh, could, could you also consider uh, to take out the, uh, the application of the virtual machine and migrate it to another already existing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, this is exactly the problem. Just because migrating a virtual machine is, is complicated, you might need to exchange a lot of data, mm -hmm. which is not useful. I mean, it will depend on the backhaul. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't have, uh, let's say, Faber uh, backhaul, uh, it, it is complicated. This is why it is useful to have these tools that will uh, allow you to optimize every time the assignment, the association between mobile users and base stations and cloud. Mm -hmm. And you see, the, the interesting point is that uh, data traffic and the computational re requests, now they go together. Let's suppose that there is a Wi-Fi here, there, and maybe this is the best one for me. And I want to offload my computation. Mm -hmm. But and, and this Wi-Fi now has certain computational capabilities, so my application will run there. So from the radio point of view, this is certainly the best uh, access point for me. But let's suppose now that this Wi-Fi is running a very intensive application for someone else, not for me. Maybe at the other end of the room, there is another Wi-Fi which is farther away from me. But in that Wi-Fi, nothing is running. That is free. So from the point of view of overall latency, latency required to run an application, maybe that, that uh, base station becomes better to serve me. You see, this is a, a, a new way to look at the, at the handover mechanism, for example. So the solution will be the trade-off between these aspects. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Um, yeah. We have some, some particular examples uh, of, of those applications that you can offload to a Wi-Fi access point, and also that would actually that could be migrated. There's some, some examples, maybe also even examples that you implemented in, in Tropic. Yeah, in Tropic there are a few examples. One, uh, I mean, uh, there are um, demonstrators. Essentially, there are two demonstrators. 
One is, uh, let's say, more suitable for um, what is known as uh, data partitioning. You know, here I, I just talked about uh, task partitioning, meaning that you have a program that you want to run, and this program is made of different modules, and you decide which modules to run here and there. Data partitioning means that you have uh, a bunch of data that you want to process, and you want to decide which part of the data you will process locally or remotely. So an example of this that was uh, implemented in a demonstrator in Tropic was uh, virus scanning. This is an example of data partitioning. So you want to do virus scan, and you want to decide how many files, let's say, you will scan locally, and how many of them you will uh, uh, scan remotely. And then there is another example of task partitioning. There is an application uh, made from uh, our colleagues from Prague, uh, CTU, uh, Technical University of Prague. So what they have is that they have an application where uh, you go around with your mobile phone, then you point in a certain direction, you see an image of the city, it's like when you take pictures, but then uh, depending on what you selected as interesting items for you, either museums, restaurants, or whatever, this application will tell you the, the way to these places and so on. So again, you see this is an application where essentially what you exchange are a few bits because essentially you are sending your GPS parameters to the, to the cloud and then the cloud will find out the optimal uh, itinerary for you in terms of uh, what to do, where to go, time, and blah, blah, blah. So you see, this is a, an application where there is a lot of computation and not much exchange of bits to enable the, the computation of loading. Yeah, these were implemented, these were demonstrated. I don't know if you had time to, to look at them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, this is another point because, uh, uh, yeah, of course, this is a problem because if you migrated everything, <laughs> at a certain point, if you lose any connectivity, then you need to take back, let's say, the program execution in the, in the mobile side. And this is why in the initial uh, graph partitioning that I illustrated, I had all those binary variables those variables were just meant to take into account this, the fact that uh, if you offload something, you need to take into account that at that point you don't need to send bits because the application is there, and vice versa. If you are running here, I don't need to exchange. So in principle, if you have everything under control, I mean channel, uh, uh, computational uh, parameters and so on, you are able in principle to find out the optimal partition and saying. But of course as you move, the problem becomes more and more complicated because you need to update your knowledge about what's going on. Okay, thank you very much for this. Thank you, thank you.